come to see the world. With support from our partners at Ticket.com, we hope to bring you with us to experience the many holiday destinations this world has to offer. This is a show. A show which aims to explore all corners of the globe. A show which aims to highlight the beauty, the wonders, the adventures, and the people that make this world a place truly worth living in. A show which we hope one day will inspire you to take into our footsteps and make the journey yourself. Join us as we embark on this adventure. to see the world. Our first episode of See the World will feature plenty of beautiful places and friendly faces in Bangkok. From the cheerful shop owners in the floating markets to the friendly staff in the most luxurious of hotels to the everyday people in the city going about their business. But first, a brief history lesson. And what better place to talk about the history of this country than in the most iconic legacy of its kingdoms? The Grand Palace. Thailand, or as it's previously known, the Kingdom of Siam, was established in 1238, more than 700 years ago. And as you can see, many of the features that are built throughout the years, throughout the centuries, are still here. And truly so because they are one of the only Southeast Asian countries to never have been colonized, ever, from what I know. Throughout the vast majority of those centuries, the Kingdom of Siam has been ruled under several kingdoms. Namely the Sukhothai, the Ayutthaya, the Tonburi, and the Ratanakosin last of which built this grand palace at the beginning of the reign in 1782. While this was formerly the head office of the king himself as well as people in government, that is no longer the case because of something that occurred in the 1930s. Specifically, the Siamese Revolution of 1932. A bloodless coup d'etat which ended the centuries-long absolute monarchy and began the era of constitutional monarchy that persists until today, with the royal family only maintaining ceremonial powers. Now, the official constitution of Thailand does not name an official state religion while also guaranteeing freedom of religion. However, the overwhelmingly prevalent religion in Thailand is Buddhism, accounting for 93% of the population. This is why wherever you go in Thailand, a Buddhist temple is always nearby. 
if you want to have a taste of the Buddhist culture in this country, there is no better place to go than here. Right in front of us is the lifeline of Thailand. It is the Cho Phraya River. And just across is the Wat Arun, also known as the Temple of Dawn. Founded in 1656 and finished in 1851, this massive temple towers high above the low buildings surrounding the banks of the Cho Phraya. And as one of the central hubs of Buddhism in this country, followers of this religion come from all around to visit and to worship. Whether they're an ordinary citizen or a Buddhist monk. Both of these places are located on the southwestern end of Bangkok, near the banks of the Cho Phraya River. And any place you stay will have a character all of its own. If you're lucky, you might just find yourself in one of the best kept secrets in Bangkok. This is the Meduzi, a boutique hotel which provides a compromise between luxury and budget. And thanks to our partners at Ticket.com, we were given the opportunity to have a taste of this luxury. In the morning, I found myself waking up in the softest of beds, surrounded by the skyline of Bangkok. This is the Meduzi Suite, the best available room in the Meduzi. This 79 square meter suite wraps around the building like a python on a tree, providing a nearly 270 degree view of the hotel surroundings. Furnished with an eclectic mix of modern touches, vintage technology, and traditional artwork, it paints the perfect caricature of the character of Bangkok. Plenty of space for fun, but also plenty of space for business. What I really like about the suite is that they have this nice little office here that's completely separated from other parts of the room. And that's really useful because it's so conducive to like working. When in other hotels, sometimes I kind of get distracted from all the views, but this, I just have a wall, nice little lamp here, flowers, and I can just focus on any work that I need to do. The room also features a large walk-in closet with enough space to fit an elephant. And finally, you also have this absolutely wondrous bathroom as well, completely surrounded with marble, marble floors, and a beautiful bathtub where you have these jets of water that spray on your body and massage you as you take a bath inside. And they also have this beautiful and lovely uh, overhead shower too. Now speaking of showers, I do need to shower and prepare for our activities for today. So if you'll excuse me, I'd like to uh, do so now, so goodbye. Feeling fresh and ready, and after a delicious breakfast, I opened up a book from the vast library surrounding the restaurant tables. With a coffee in hand, I searched for destinations to visit and found myself lost in a page about the markets of Bangkok. Places where anything can be found.
join us to see the world. Join us to see the world. As with many cities in Southeast Asia, Bangkok is rife with traditional markets where visitors can find unique and interesting items, food, and even live music. Markets like these exist all over the city, but some are not in places where you'd expect. This is Damnun Saruak. Located 100 kilometers south of Bangkok, this intricate maze of canals is the home of the floating market. It arose after the canals were built in 1868 by the order of King Rama IV and became the center hub of the local economy for nearly a hundred years. In fact, floating markets in Thailand originally began to exist in this country even centuries earlier. Due to the areas adjacent to rivers being the first to be populated in historical times. Resulting in the community's reliance on rivers and canals as their main method of transport. However, after the turn of the 20th century, many of these floating markets disappeared. With the construction of canals having been replaced by that of road and rail networks, making these gems of history obsolete. Thankfully, some including this have survived to this day and have been turned into a tourist destination. Making this an excellent location to experience the life of Thais in the past. Right, we're already about to board the uh, boat right now. Thank you. Okay. Being in a tourist destination, the vendors on this floating market were always more than happy to approach us, bringing with them food laid out atop their boats. This woman in red in particular was very friendly indeed. And after we bought a serving of mango sticky rice, she added in a surprise little bonus. Free banana. Oh yeah. Hey. Oh. Just, just, just. <laughs> Just one or one? All of this? All of it? Oh, oh. Uh. Kapun Kap. Kapun Kap. Feeling thankful for having been given the bananas, I immediately had a munch and I am happy to report. I don't know what they put in these bananas, but they're so delicious. Food, however, is not the only thing that can be found in Damnon Sadwa. Because this market was full of clothes, trinkets, and traditional toys. This made me a very happy boy. Do you have anything for a 90? Oh. <laughs> ken Ken, okay, let's buy that. Bye bye. Oh yeah. Uh, what is it called? What is this called? Name, name, what name? 
Capa chat. Chat chat. And if you are watching this, Mr. Vendor, I'm really sorry. Now, floating markets are great. The problem is the boats that are used only go in a set direction, so it can be slightly inflexible. Luckily, Bangkok provides many choices to shop at markets, whether you prefer being on water. Or if you want to feel a little more grounded, you can come here to Chatuchak Market, which is the biggest weekend market in all of Thailand. And so large, in fact, that you can spend your entire day here to its 15,000 plus stalls, buying products, seeing things, and not knowing what you'll end up with at the end of the day. With the weekend in full swing, the streets of Chatuchak transformed into a sea of soul. With musicians playing to adoring crowds in one corner, friends laughing and spending time together in another, and businesses booming with customers all around. The smell of spices and beef filled the air, and it was a smell that I could not resist. It was the smell of Pat Krapo, one of the most popular Thai a la carte dishes. <laughs> if you ever choose to eat here, however, just make sure you know the size of the food because if you can see, this is I bought a medium here. But it's so massive, I can call this extra large if I'm in Indonesia. And even the other guys, if you look at their plates, they haven't even finished many of theirs. So, <laughs> And they eat quite a lot. Pat Kripo, however, was delicious. In the setting of being in a traditional Thai market, eating traditional Thai food is an experience like nothing else. This traditional market, however, sits in Nonclub. An enclave surrounded by infrastructure that reflects the state of contemporary Bangkok. And this is a state which simply cannot be ignored. Join us to see the world. Big reward for us. Join us to see the world. With an efficient public transport system and filled with high-rise buildings and skyscrapers, Bangkok is a city that has transitioned gracefully into the 21st century. And there is no better place which reflects this transition better than Patung Wan. Once a rural area on the eastern outskirts of the city, it is now home to shopping malls, overhead railways, and this. This is the Sindon Kempinski. Nestled in the Sindorn village, this five-star luxury hotel is perhaps the most exquisite in all of Bangkok. With an award-winning architectural and interior design, this hotel represents the peak of Bangkok society in the 21st century. And thanks to our partners at Thicken.com, we were given the opportunity to have a taste of this contemporary, luxurious, and elegant hotel. This is the Grand Deluxe. 
<laughs> nice. With an area of 66 square meters, a city view, and furnished with beautiful contemporary furniture, smart home technology, and a bathroom surrounded by marble walls, it is a caricature of the essence of contemporary Bangkok. It does tend to get quite uh, hot in Bangkok, but luckily the hotel have very kindly provided us with uh, some of this body lotion here that smells of lemongrass and mandarin. Absolutely exquisite and nearly just as exquisite as the bathroom itself. Completely surrounded with marble on all sides and this marble top as well. It is a beautiful combination and to have this beautiful bathtub right next to it just makes it absolutely perfect. And everything, the interior, the attention to detail, and especially the service and this magnificent view. It truly makes me feel like an important person. It makes me feel like a VIP. But what makes this hotel truly unique is not the view, nor the exquisite rooms and suites, nor the almost obsessive attention to detail. What makes this hotel truly unique is that it aims to become a destination for wellness. An aim that is reflected by the calmness of its atmosphere, that is reflected by its serene garden sanctuary and peaceful bars and restaurants. It is an aim that is reflected by its spa services, which helps in unwinding muscles and unwinding minds. The Sindorn Kempinski is absolutely the most comfortable hotel that I have ever stayed in. It's crazy. It is the sweet icing on the cake that is the vibrant, beautiful, and absolutely stimulating city that is Bangkok. But while the Kempinski may be the icing, the cherry on top is this. This is Goang Kamun Kai Pratanam. It might seem like any other regular stall in Bangkok, really. But there is something quite special about it because you see, this is a Michelin-starred restaurant. Its specialty, the humble chicken and rice. For 60 years, Pratunam has been continuously serving its signature Thai Hainanese chicken rice. Like a clock that never stops, its recipe remaining true to itself from its very inception. A simple combination of aromatic rice cooked with chicken oil which perfectly matches the tender and juicy chicken. Whoa! Whoa! It is such a memorable dish from such a memorable restaurant in such a memorable city. And there is honestly so much more to do in Bangkok. So many places to visit. Places like Chinatown, where food stalls line the streets left and right, and where the crowds are busier than a stadium on match day. Or even places like Khao San, where you can have the absolute wildest night of your life, with the bars and the clubs being some of the liveliest spots in the city. It is a wonderful blend of traditional culture and modernity that makes for one of the most amazing destinations to visit.
And make sure to use the promo code Secret in the World TH to get a hotel discount for when you travel into Thailand and join us to see the world.